Matthew 6, 33. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. Thank you for listening and being a part of Seeking the Kingdom podcast. This is where we discuss biblical topics. God willing, we plan to have a new episode for you every Saturday morning. We pray that by listening to these podcast teachings, your faith would increase and that we would grow together as one in the body of Christ. God bless. Praise the Lord and praise God. God bless you for listening to this episode of Seeking the Kingdom podcast. Tonight's episode is 129 titled, Lowly and Triumphant. Tonight marks the first episode of our series, Road to the Cross. Tonight we'll be we will be celebrating uh, Palm Sunday for the glory of God. Our brother Jerry will bring forward the message uh, as we talk about the triumphal entry. So to begin this episode, we're going to be opening up in prayer in Jesus' name. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we acknowledge Devla Kwonsan. You are our King. You are our Lord. You are our Savior, Father God. And Devla, we say Hosanna. Hosanna in the highest. We thank you, Lord Devla, because you came on this earth, Devla, to save your people. So, Devla, save your people now, Father God. I pray, Father God, that through this message, Devla, you would pierce our hearts, Father God. I pray, Father God, that you use your servant tonight, Father God, that he would bring forward the message in boldness, Devla, for your glory. I pray, Devla, that your Holy Spirit would speak through him, Father God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you, Whitey. The mic is all yours, brother. Amen. Praise the Lord and praise God. We thank you, Lord Jesus, because we get to celebrate a Christian's favorite time of the year. This is Holy Week. This is where we celebrate uh, God's wonderful gift to us of uh, not only his death, but his resurrection. Amen. And this, this time is dedicated fully to observing that and, and studying it and praising God for it. Uh, so tonight... Uh, we're going to be talking about the beginning of Holy Week, Amen. Uh, which is uh, commonly known as Palm Sunday and also known as the triumphant entry. Uh, so when uh, the boys uh, got, when we all got together and said, okay, what can we talk about? Uh, when they asked me to share on it, I, I asked the Lord on, on what we should share about on it tonight. And well, what I got was I, I wanted to share on, on something that the Lord gave me, you know, just in, in studying specifically for the podcast. <laughs> in studying specifically for tonight, uh, I, I just found out some new information that I, I, I didn't know before and that it inspired me and it just blessed me and I couldn't wait to share it. Uh, so I, I want to start by just uh, uh, giving the title. The title uh, tonight is uh, lowly and triumphant. And, and what I'm going to do is explain why uh, that's the title. Uh, we're going to do that by going to the Word of God first. Uh, Christopher, would you read uh, the story in John uh, 12, 12 uh, that talks about Jesus and the triumphant entry? The next day, the great crowd that had come to the festival heard that Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem. They took palm branches and went out to meet him, shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the King of Israel. Jesus found a young donkey and sat on it, as it is written, Do not be afraid, daughter Zion. See, your king is coming, seated on a donkey's colt. At first, his disciples did not understand all this. Only after Jesus was glorified did they realize that these things had been written about him and that these things had been done to him. Amen. God bless you, Christopher. Uh, look, I, I, I understand that if you're listening to this podcast, you more than likely know the story that we're talking about. You more than likely understand it's Holy Week and this is Palm Sunday and this is the scripture that's to be read. But... You know, what the Lord gave me on this is just, it's something to, new to me. It's a, it's a new perspective on this scripture that, you know, I, I haven't seen before. And I, I, I just thank God for it. And what we're going to be examining tonight is, is basically the end of that scripture. It tells them, uh, it tells us, oh, the disciples said that, oh, this, they didn't understand it at the time, but this was written about Jesus. And I want to examine tonight, 
you know, where it's written and what, and, and just, you know, what did they think about? What were they pondering on basically when they realized that this is written about Jesus? And, and we have that today. Uh, that's in the book of Zechariah, chapter 9 and verse 9. So Joshua, uh, if you can go to there right now and just let's, let's read that through too. Rejoice greatly, daughter Zion. Shout, daughter Jerusalem. See, your king comes to you righteous and victorious, lowly and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. I will take away the chariots from Ephraim and the war horses from Jerusalem, and the battle bow will be broken. He will proclaim peace to the nation. His rule will extend from sea to sea and from river to the ends of the earth. As for you, because of the blood of my covenant with you, I will free your prisoners from the waterless pit. Return to your fortress, you prisoners of hope. Even now, I announce that I will restore twice as much to you. I will bend Judah as I bend my bow and fill it with Ephraim. I will rouse your sons, Zion against your sons, Greece, and make you like a warrior sword. Then the Lord will appear over them. His arrows will flash like lightning. The sovereign Lord will sound a trumpet. He will march in the storms of the south, and the Lord Almighty will shield them. They will destroy and overcome with sling stones. They will drink and roar as with wine. They will be full like a bowl used for sprinkling the corners of the altar. The Lord their God will save his people on that day as a shepherd saves his flock. They will sparkle in his land like jewel in his crown. How attractive and beautiful they will be. Grain will make the young men thrive and new wine the young women. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise God. So like I was saying, I wanted I wanted both scriptures to be read so we get the fullness of the understanding of both scriptures in their uh, entirety. So now that both scriptures have been read, now we can see what where the frame of mind of, of the disciples were. But I also want to just uh, uh, show uh, what I what I've studied on and 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 what I've got some more information on. It's very very interesting uh, because you know I, I want to understand what the Jewish people were going through during the time of the triumphal entry. See and what what I've studied on uh, basically uh, you know it, it gave me a clearer understanding. Now I want you to imagine these Jewish people are waiting for a warrior king to come and this warrior king they're waiting for when they're shouting hosanna they're asking they're, they're, the hosanna means specifically save or save now and and they're they're using that as praise so that that's directed towards jesus because they believe him to be the messiah as the warrior king now the reason they're waiting for this is you know this is uh, this is what I learned. It's very interesting. This is after Alexander the Great. This is after Alexander the Great did what nobody else in the world would do. Uh, in this same Zechariah scripture, you see, it, it, if you were a Jew, you know, you would read this scripture very differently. It's about war. It's about uh, you know war times and, and God's pronouncing uh, a judgment on, on a, a, a city named Tyre and Sidon. Uh, so it, it, that city Tyre, you know, could not be won over. It, it was impossible to be won over. And what happened is Alexander the Great did what uh, Nebuchadnezzar couldn't do in years. He did it in seven months. He he conquered the city of Tyre, which was you know, full of prosperity and full of resources and full of, and, you know, the prophecy, uh, from what I understand, from what I, what I read and what I studied, most scholars believe that the prophecy in Zechariah 9 was fulfilled because Greece, uh, Alexander the Great, did devastate uh, Tyre, and they, and they conquered, and they were that, 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 you know, conquering force that the world has never seen before. So, Israel's now waiting for their 
Messiah. Israel is not waiting for that to happen to them. They believe that you know their Messiah is going to be this type of, and yet here you see, you know, the scripture. Here's your your king, lowly, and riding on a donkey. Lowly, I meaning be humble. You know, Jesus comes lowly and riding on a donkey, and yet you know we still get this picture of triumph from them. Why? They're still crying, save! They're still. They believe him to be this this mighty savior, but Jesus wants to show Israel who he truly is, and 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 it paints a much different picture than who the the, the Israelite people thought he was going to be. If we examine, you know, the 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 scripture in John, the triumphal entry, to a Jew it looks one way, and to us, it looks very different. To me. It looks like more of a picture of heaven. It looks like God's people and God the King is amongst them, and it looks like God's people are laying down, you know, things and and and, and declaring Him to be King, and it, and it's a peaceful thing. It's a it's a, 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 a exalting thing to God, and and you know, specifically about the palms. The palms I found to to uh, uh, and I've studied, they represent righteousness. In, in Psalms, Mutopi, the righteous will flourish like the palm tree, uh, and you know it also the palm tree. The, the the word there actually means upright, and when you when the Bible talks about the upright, that's that's the righteous. So there you see them laying down righteousness. And Jesus walking upon, so that shows a picture of us, you know, submitting to the righteousness of Christ. That shows us telling God, you know, our righteousness is filthy rags, and you're the King of righteousness. You're the King of glory. You're the. That's the beautiful triumphal entry that we as Christians are to see. This is the victory that He was proclaiming, and yet, and yet. The Jews missed it. They missed it, but we don't have to. The <clears throat> the, the the in the uh, the Zechariah scripture it says that I've come to free the prisoners, the prisoners from the well that has no water, from the cistern without water. You know that that that's Jesus telling us, you know, a cistern without water that's purposeless. That's meaningless. You know that 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 brings no nourishment. That brings no salvation. That brings no life. That brings no nothing. That is useless and empty. And yet Jesus has come to spare us and save the prisoners. He calls us prisoners of hope. You know why we're the prisoners and not of hope and not just prisoners? Well, we because we have a blessed hope, and that blessed hope is proven all throughout. This holy week, that blessed hope is to be celebrated because we do see the picture. We do see Jesus lowly and humble, and yes, triumphant in victory. Because all of this is to say that Jesus Christ is the true King. He is the true King, and even though He's not the conquering King uh, that uh, Israel saw in these days, we know. Jesus Christ is the conquering King, and will return, and will be that wonderful picture of of triumph and wonder. We know in in my studies, guys, I, I was looking at David Guzek's commentary, and he says, you know, the first part of Zechariah nine that's been fulfilled by uh, uh, <coughs> Alexander the Great, but the second part, well, we're waiting for that to be fulfilled. The second part of Zechariah nine, you know, it shows that the uh, the Lord comes with a, a lightning and and bow with and and, and and well, we understand that language as Christians. That language speaks to us because we find it elsewhere in the Bible. We find it in in prophecies of revelations when Jesus comes back. We find so. Oh, David Guzai Pinga, listen. This is this is more of a picture from Zechariah nine down. This is more of a picture of the the, the millennium. The millennial reign. This is more a picture of heaven. This is more a picture of a, of the triumph that is to come, 
And Jesus is you know, foreshadowing here what is to come, which is our victory. This is our blessed hope. This is what we wait for. Jesus is freeing us from the well without water and bringing us to the victory that he has in store for us. This is how he is both lowly and humble and triumphant. Our King, our Savior, is bringing this victory to his people and his people are the ones who believe in him. That's me. That's the listener tonight. That's all of us. Now, what we're meant to do is look at the word, be filled with the spirit and rejoice at the sight of Jesus as we understand that he is the triumphant king in our lives, who's entered into our lives, who now reigns in our lives, who died for us on the cross and was risen, giving us the victory, giving, uh, imputing to us life eternal. Jesus Christ is more than a conqueror and he makes me more than a conqueror. Jesus Christ is the lowly, triumphant king. God bless you guys. That's what I had to share. Uh, I'm hoping that the boys might have some input. Uh, guys, I'm going to open up the mics to you. God bless you. Amen. God bless you, buddy. Uh, for the glory of God, it may have been confusing to the Jewish people on Tunchi. You know, seeing all this, remembering Zachariah and seeing all this. But I thank God because His Holy Spirit is with us today. And His Holy Spirit reminds us of these scriptures. His Holy Spirit uh, gives us insight like He gave you tonight, Barry. And His Holy Spirit reminds us that he, the second coming is still to come. And that King that we're, that they was waiting for, He's going to come. He's not going to come on a, a, a lowly donkey anymore. He's going to come on a horse, a white horse for that matter. He's going to come as a king with a sword in his hand. He's going to come with judgment. He's going to come with uh, eyes of fire, the Bible uh, uh, says he looks like. And that's something that we look forward to. So yes, maybe this is what, this wasn't what they was expecting. Maybe they was expecting a more of a, a conqueror like Alexander the Great. But we can be assured of one thing. When we come back with him on that day, it will be more than this world ever seen. Amen. Wonderful, Joshua. Uh, that being said, uh, we want to uh, close in prayer. Uh, and like always, we see everyone's prayers. Uh, we have the prayer list that we pray for uh, on on, the, uh, on our uh, prayer line and on the, on the podcast. So we're going to end in prayer, uh, acknowledging and, and putting all these prayers before the Lord. Christopher, would you pray for these prayers uh, and uh, uh, just pray uh, also for this holy week to, that the Lord would just fill our hearts with the celebration that he deserves? Amen. Heavenly Father, we give you glory, honor, and praise. I did love churches. We thank you for being our savior. Thank you for saving us, Lord. Thank you for your grace and thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your blood that was shed for us. Thank you, Lord, that you left heaven, Father God, to come to this world, Father God, to just walk with this earth, Father God, to receive the praises of people one day, Father God, and the next them shout out crucify. We thank you, Lord, that you took that upon you for us, Lord. Today, you are the King of kings and the Lord of lords, and we thank you for that, Father God. Thank you, Lord, that you overcame death in the grave, and through you we have victory in every circumstance, Lord. Father God, I pray for the listener, Lord, their prayers, the prayers that we see on the Instagram, Father God, and the DMs. I pray, Father God, that you bring healing upon your people, that people would be set free from heart disease, from kidney disease, from sugar diabetes, that children would receive speech and be healed from autism in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we're praying for those guys, that they would come home to their families, Father God. I pray that you would make a way somehow, some way, and that you would just help them in that situation. Devla, we put before you this holy week, Devla. We put before you, Lord, that every church, Father God, would be spirit-led with them. 
that each and every person Father, would just be focused and dedicated on what you've done for us father god in this Father, and how great you are and how awesome you are lord that you died and that you rose up on the third day today to give us life lord and devla we thank you for that life today Holy Spirit of God, minister to your people. Minister to us, Lord. Teach us more and more and more about you, Father God. And we give you glory and we give you honor and we give you thanks, Lord, for who you are. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord and praise God. Thank you for listening to this episode of Seeking the Kingdom. God willing, we plan to have a new episode for you every Friday and every Saturday morning. Please continue to be a part of what God is doing at Kingdom of God Ministry in Miami, Florida. We kindly ask that you share this episode, subscribe and follow us. It would help the show to reach other people that we may further the Kingdom of God. We also ask that you keep us at the church in your daily prayers. God bless.